after making a couple of videos on what I do as a functional analyst, I was asked in a couple of comments to break down a little bit on technical aspects of doing my job. And that is what this video is all about. So if you also have any questions, just comment and I will try to answer them. And if I find your questions very interesting, then I might even make a video about it. Now, functional analysis is divided into a few steps as you can see on your screen. So let's start with the first step that is requirement gathering. Here, everything starts by sitting down with different people. It can be business people who want to improve their business processes. For example, HR head who want to improve the interaction with HR from emails to fixed forms or application, which users can use for requesting something from the HR department. Or it can also be the actual end users who are having certain difficulties in doing their job properly and want to simplify it by using your system. At this stage, they have very high level idea about their needs and they don't know if those needs can be satisfied by using your systems or not. So as a functional analyst, it's your job to help them in breaking down their needs and making them aware about how it can be solved by using your system. Sometimes the stakeholders can also come up with certain crazy requirements. So as a functional analyst, you also need to know when to say no if you feel like their requirements are not feasible. So here you might even have to act like a sales guy to convince them with your alternative solutions or workaround to solve their problems. Now, the second step of functional analysis is architectural design. Once you have gathered enough detailed requirements, you have to start thinking about how to design the system so that you can demo it to the end users. And depending on the tool you're working with, you can have a dedicated system architect to help you in the design process. But as a functional analyst, you need to have a complete overview of the tool or system you're working with. For example, as I've mentioned before, I work with ServiceNow and I need to know ServiceNow's complete capabilities and also how things can be designed using it. But system architects will have an idea about overall bigger picture. For example, let's say there is a requirement to integrate your tool or system with XYZ app. And it turns out that XYZ app is going to get decommissioned in one year. So system architects will have an idea about how to reduce those integration efforts with the help of certain possible alternative design solutions. So basically this is to future-proof your system as sometimes there can be conflicting requirements. And if you didn't think about them beforehand, then you might need to redesign your entire system from scratch. And that's why good architectural design is always useful. Now the third step in functional analysis is development. And again, depending on the tool you're working with, you can have your own development team to work with, or you might have to do your own development by yourself as a functional analyst. In my case, ServiceNow is a low-code, no-code tool, and as its name suggests, it does not involve a lot of coding or programming. So we do our own development, or uh, we will call it, we do our own configurations, because it just involves knowledge of minus scripting and some uh, knowledge of some APIs to understand how different systems interact with each other. But it is definitely not as technical or not as programming intensive as, let's just say, full-stack development, for example. But then there are tools such as Salesforce and SAP, which will definitely have their own dedicated development team. Once you have completed development and future-proofing your system, then you have to test it. First, you have to start doing regression testing as a functional analyst on your own uh, by testing out multiple scenarios. And once you have enough confidence, you have to start UAT, where you hand over your solution to the actual end users so that they can test if your solution satisfies their requirements or not. But before starting the UAT, you also have to make sure that you are training the actual end users well, because then they'll know how to use your system. And because the actual end users understand their workflow very well as it's part of their day-to-day -day job, they'll test out your system thoroughly and can come up with certain bugs. And if they do come up with some bugs, then you as a functional analyst has an extra responsibility to fix them before going live. Now the penultimate step in functional analysis is go live or system implementation. Here, whatever you have developed so far, along with the UAT feedback, needs to go to production. If you have developed everything correctly, nothing should go wrong, as you're just pushing it to the production. But because as you're pushing it to production, where everyone can or has to use your system, the risk is a lot higher here. As if something goes wrong, then the impact will be organization-wide. And there are sometimes certain functionalities which you can only test if the system is live. And if you have conducted the testing correctly, then usually this phase also gets completed quite easily. And once the system is live, 
users will realize certain extra scenarios which are breaking your flows and they can also come up with certain bugs or enhancement to your application. And that's where the last phase of functional analysis starts, which is application enhancements. In application enhancement phase, uh, the cycle starts again with the functional requirement gathering. But this time the scope is very limited. The scope is limited to whatever you have already decided to include in your next release. Now the release structure and sprint planning depends on every company. I would say rather than every company, it also, or it can also depend on every team actually. For me, we plan our backlog for every quarter and uh, we have a monthly release. In between, if we receive any issues, we ask our stakeholders to prioritize them. And depending on their prioritization, we will include it in our backlog and sprints. And yeah, that's basically it. Apart from this fixed activities of uh, functional analysts, you might also have to take care of some project planning, system upgrades or training, etc. I believe I've explained everything in detail, but as I've mentioned at the start of the video, if you still have any questions where you want me to focus in detail on any particular step, feel free to ask your questions or provide your suggestions in the comments. And yeah, I would definitely include them in my upcoming videos. So subscribe and see you next time.